Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Halloween Harvest 2023 post show conference. Did so good at Summer Mania, we figured we'd bring it back and have a whole new lineup of people for the galaxy to ask questions for. First up, on tonight's panel, he made his in-ring debut, as JJ said, with the main roster for XCW. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a worldwide traveled talent. Some would call him an everywhere man. This is Destructive Jack Delta. Jack Delta, welcome to the XCW Halloween Harvest Post Show Conference. Um, before we open it up to the galaxy here in the room, I, I would like to ask you a question. Of course. Um, this season, more so than any other in XCW history, has seen a very broad range of outside talent come in and make their splash in the XCW pool. How does it feel for someone who's been in so many companies and organizations over the years to get the opportunity to wrestle on one of XCW's biggest shows of the year. It's an honor. Uh, to put it simply, it's an honor. Um, one of the best things that I love about XCW um, is through all of the sea of trash that's out there. Um, it's consistent. Um, you get consistent guys, uh, you get consistent uh, homegrown talent, uh, you get a ton of people that really care about the product here, and it's been running for forever. Obviously, like, you, you see in all the marketing, you see in all the commentary, you see with all the superstars talking that it's, it's 20th anniversary. And for Backyard Wrestling, that is when, like, America knew about Backyard Wrestling is ba back in the early 2000s and the late 90s. And the, the fact that um, XCW has been running this long is just incredible. And that's the main reason that I'm a part of all of this. Now, we see you holding your head up there, obviously. Things didn't go according to plan for you tonight yeah. in your uh, big show debut on the pre-show. Uh, this obviously isn't your first run-in with Jacob Collins throughout your career. How did this match differ from any other match you've had with him anywhere else? It was a mean streak. He normally comes out and he's very bright. Um, he's very happy. Um, I know him personally and he, he loves to compete, but there was some side of him that happened to come out to, like tonight that I just, I can't comprehend. I don't know where that came from. I don't know why that happened. But, oh my God. He, he, just, went, he just went behind my back. He went be behind all of your guys' back and drilled my head into a chair. And I'm not going to forget that. Well, I'm going to open it up to the galaxy here tonight for questions from the audience. Is there anyone here who has a question? Uh, Mr. Gamer Show returning for the second conference in a row. Mr. Delta, it's great seeing you out there competing <clears throat> for XCW. Now that we've gotten to truly see you make your first big mark on XCW, what's next for your future? I'm gonna be 100 percent honest. I don't know, and that's the that's the beauty behind it. It completely depends on the offers. It completely depends on the the time, um, because everybody knows if you follow me and you like you you followed my journey. Um, this year has been very uh, tough, and <coughs> XCW, along with a, a few select other companies, have been trying to give me a home for a while now. Um, but travel travel is just insane. And um, that's one thing that um, people don't get to see on that side of uh, all this like backyard wrestling is because everybody here in XCW, they walk down the street and they get to compete here. You know what I mean? But me, I have to travel four hours every single time, just here and then back. Um, in addition to the other obligations I have in Indiana um, that would take up another day. So it's, um, 
depending on the obligations, depending on like the offers, depending on the timing, I would love to go one-on-one -on -one with every single member of the XCW roster at some point. Is there anybody else who has a question for Mr. Jack Delta? We have one here in the back. So competing for XCW, who out of the roster would you most want to tangle with in the ring? That, that's a fascinating question. Um, see, um, there's a ton of talent here. And the best part about XCW's roster is there's a wide variety of talent. And um, I, I, th I think for uh, most people, big guy, small guy di dynamics work the best. Because uh, as much as big meaty men slap a knee, goes pretty hard. Um, that's not uh, the best. Um, so I would definitely say uh, Hunter Halkin, uh, Miano Diaz, uh, Leon Lux, um, Corey Lee, um, most of those like smaller guys. Um, not that I wouldn't have good matches with all of the bigger men here, but I think it's uh, more compelling. I think um, a David and Goliath type story is the best thing that you can present in wrestling. So. Does anybody else have a question? Oh, uh, yes. I would like to know your favorite ice cream flavor. <laughs> favorite ice cream flavor? That's a good one. Ooh. Man, okay. See, this thing I hate about opinions like this is I'm going to say something and then I'm going to get booed no matter what I say because everybody has differing opinions. Butter pecan and then cookies and cream. Well, a lack of booze from. Boo! Uh, kick him out. Had, had to get one. Uh, and we have one more question from the audience here in the back. So, obviously, you've. We talk about how you've worked so many different places, and that's kind of your mo. Is how many feds that you've you've worked for and traveled through uh, through the country. Where, in your opinion, does XW stack up? You talked about consistency. Um, what about overall product? Where does that stack up? And you know, in comparison to other places that you work. Overall, um, it's definitely higher up there. Um, XCW has one thing, like it has a bunch of different things, but I think the one thing that sets it apart and in a higher bracket of tier, not only is the wrestling, because the wrestling is fairly consistent, but the biggest thing is the editing. The editing actually looks like there's effort put behind it. The editing looks like there's like thought. Um, the editing looks like um, all of the superstars know what's going on. They know when the matches are taking place. Um, the Like the roster is all together with everything. And, um, it actually makes it feel like a show. And uh, that, that I think is what sets it above a lot of other places. Because a lot of other places do God knows what. They run their shit through potatoes. Like I, I can't even describe some of the shit I've seen with their products and it, it is just terrible. It is, it's awful. And we have one final question from the Galaxy before we get your closing thoughts here on the Halloween Harvest Post Show Conference. Here in the back. Uh, um, you know, we saw Aaron Blaze come in a, little, a couple shows ago and choose XCW over EBW. It begs the question, would you want to stay with the XCW crowd or the EBW crowd to get an opportunity? Oh, if I was presented that option, obviously I'm choosing home XCW. Like, well, what, what, what's the offer with EBW? If EBW was that great, that would be the name of the channel. Well, Mr. Jack Delta, it's been a pleasure having you here on the post show conference. Are there any closing thoughts before you exit stage right? Right, left. It's right, left. Yeah. It's his left. Yeah, it's my left. <laughs> I appreciate that, though. Um, my closing <laughs> thoughts. You walk into the wall, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I probably will. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> no, closing thoughts. Um. It's, it's uh, few and far between that I actually allow myself to get out and wrestle. Um, for, uh, for actual information, this is the first time I've been, uh, I've done like a wrestling trip in like ages now. And um, XCW obviously brought me in. I appreciate them for giving me the opportunity. And the thing is, is I want to sit here and say, oh, I cannot wait to see you guys again and all that. Um, 
All I know is I don't know what the future holds. And I do hope that I can make it back out to XCW. I hope that I get to run through the talent and not only prove to the audience and the superstars and myself, but all of you that I belong here with everybody here in XCW. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jack Delta, for being here. Give me a round of applause for Mr. Destructive Jack Delta. I hit the wall. The next guest here tonight on the post-show conference is your brand new XCW International Champion who had a last man standing match with Hunter Halkin. Ladies and gentlemen, the fearless one, Leon Lux. Your job, my hair looks better. Oh, God. Anyway, welcome, Mr. Leon Lux, to the post show conference. Yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, before I open it up to the galaxy, I would I'd like to ask you there has been multiple international champions in the past, and you, throughout your history in XCW, never got to add your name to that list of champions, not only the international, but any championship in XCW, as this is your first championship here within the company. How does it feel having left, done your training, and got that experience, and come back to now be in the position of international champion? Uh, well... To be honest, I only wanted this championship only because I didn't like Hunter Halpin because he likes to level up. Game over, buddy. So, it's an honor, I guess, to have a title. I can have any title I want. I'm better than anybody on the roster. Uh, but, I started with the International only because I don't like that he thought he was leveled up enough to go up against a pro like myself. Oh, I'm now going to open it up to the galaxy for questions here for your new international champion. Is there anybody here who has a question for Mr. Leon Lux? Over here in the gamer shirt. God, gamer boy. You seem to really be fascinated about Hunter Halkin's way of style with his level up and game over. Do you believe this is game over between you two? I mean, if you have my personal opinion about it, I mean, I gave him the last look at the title with his own curm stop, so yeah, it should stop. But if he wants to try to continue with this whole level up thing and try to give me game over, right here, come get it. And is there anybody else who has a question? Uh, Mr. Man in the back. So if it is game over between yourself and Hunter Hawkins, who's your next target? My next target? Oh, let's see. Who else do I not like in this company? Oh, ah. Let's go with Eric Mason. He, he's holding that New Age Championship. He, he was so cocky in my tag title, uh, in the tag match I was in with Corey. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I, I like to go big and go home. And anybody else with a question, Mr. Christmas Colors? You won the international championship from uh, Hunter Helkin in a last man standing match. Uh, do you think that would have differed if you would have actually had to pin him or submit him? Never. I could have pinned him. I pinned him in our tag team match we had. I pinned his ass right after I hit him with my leap of faith. He hit me with that tonight? Cool. Whatever. That's my move. The reason why he didn't get me to stay down with that move, because that's mine. Next. Is there anybody else here from the galaxy that would like to ask the international champion a question? If you were go, if you would go to another company to wrestle, who would you like want to face? Of who you know. Hmm. 
we're not talking about inside XCW roster now. So now we think we have a fan over here that thinks we can open up this to the world. I am international champion. But I only defend it in one area. But if you want to bring in somebody else, bring in Jay Plex. Bring in Bobby Joe. Bring in Rhino. Bring whoever. I'll still take him down, no matter what. Alrighty, and before we get some closing thoughts from the international champion, is there anybody else here from the galaxy that would like to ask Mr. Leon Lux a question? Mr. Blue Shirt. Oh uh, yes, Mr. Leon Lux. Uh, could you tell me by chance your favorite ice cream flavor? Ice cream. Who the hell cares about my favorite ice cream color? I care. Flavor, color, who cares? Because, you know what? It's the color that gives it the flavor, so it's the same thing. But if you want to know, if you really, really got to know, it's pink. I'll let you use your own mind to figure that out. <laughs> well, Mr. Leon Lux, I don't believe there's any other questions from They're the fucking guys. better not be. So, I will leave it to you for any final thoughts before you step away from the conference today. Any final thoughts? Here's my final thoughts. I'm glad this is over. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was your international champion, uh, Leon Luxon. Not necessarily switching gears from the international championship, but switching to a, what some would call, stepping stone towards the international championship a man who would be in money in the bank tonight ladies and gentlemen your xcw new age champion eric mason man what a guy that little leon likes is huh well before we open it up to the galaxy you mentioned leon lux obviously you defend your New Age Championship seven times, and you have an opportunity to face Mr. Leon Lux for the International Championship, and you got oh so close last time before unfortunately losing the championship to Corey Lee. What's different about this time around that's going to help you maintain the New Age Championship and get those seven defenses, whereas last time you didn't get to seven? Um, so with Corey, you know, I made a few mistakes being the young guy and as a veteran he is, he capitalized. But I went back, I've studied the matches, I've seen where I went wrong, and now I'm just going to change that. And anyone I face during these next seven defenses, I'm not going to make those mistakes. I'm going to capitalize and I'll see whoever's international at the time, if it's even Leon Muggs. Now, you went into Money in the Bank tonight. How would it have felt if you had happened to not only be holding the New Age Championship, but also managed to climb that ladder, secure the briefcase, and secure an opportunity to cash in for any XCW Championship you have your eye on? I mean, it would have felt great. I mean, obviously, I didn't get what done what I wanted to tonight, and I'm very disappointed in that, but I still have this opportunity with the New Age, and I'm going to capitalize on that as much as I can. Now, I'm going to open it up here in the galaxy. Um, we have a question from the man in the corner. Uh, yeah, you debuted a brand new look tonight here at uh, Halloween Harvest. Took off your overalls, wearing the shorts. How does it feel to actually step out of those overalls for the first time? Uh, it felt great, you know. I feel like the overalls really restrict my movement, but this was really a Halloween Harvest special. So, next time you see me, the overalls will be back in everyone will enjoy that as well all right do we have any other questions from the galaxy mr campbell in the corner i have to know what's your favorite ice cream flavor that is an absolute great question as you can know i'm not a small guy so i do love ice cream but it's going to be an unpopular opinion i love vanilla straight vanilla is my favorite flavor uh, so you like white people exactly <laughs> Do we have any other questions from the galaxy here tonight? I don't even know 
<laughs> Mr. Gamer shirt. Sure. Alright, Mr. Mason, it's great to see you again. You too. I have to ask you this. You saw your best friend Hunter Halkin today get defeated by Leon Lux, and you believe that you are next in line for that international championship. Where do you think you will succeed where Hunter failed? Um, so I talk with Hunter every day after every one of his matches, after every one of mine, and I got that inside where he failed with Leon. I'm going to know how to capitalize, and I just got to say, Leon, you better watch out because I'm coming. I got that grudge for you. You can't just take out my best friend without any, any repercussion, so be ready. Is there anybody else here in the galaxy tonight that has a question for our new age champion? Mr. Man back. Are you keeping the gear? <laughs> I mean, I'd like to, but we'll just have to see. Oh. Do we have any other questions from the galaxy here tonight? Before I let you go, Mr. Eric Mason, other than the New Age Championship and obviously the International Championship being the next step for you, how did it feel seeing your best friend not walk away victorious and be able to celebrate with you as a champion? I mean, it's hard. It's, it's like taking a loss myself. I mean, but I got his back. I know he'll be back before we know it. and. He'll have that title around his waist again. Believe that. Well, Mr. Eric Mason, if there's no other questions or comments from the galaxy, uh, do you have any final thoughts before you step away here tonight? I uh, just want to say thanks for having me and everybody out there that's going to be in part of these seven defenses. Better be ready for an old school ass whoop, and that's all I got to say. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was your XCW New Age champion. And while the topic of conversation in that interview consisted of Eric Mason's best friend, we would like to now bring on to the post-show conference here for Halloween Harvest, the man who unfortunately lost the last man standing match tonight for the international championship, one Mr. Hunter Halkin. Welcome to the post-show conference, Hunter Halkin. Obviously, unfortunately, things did not go your way here tonight. Uh, before I open it up to the Galaxy, lately in the last few shows since Summer Mania and your grueling TLC match with Brogan O'Shea, we've seen a different side of Hunter Halkin, the, the yang to the yin, as your gear might so suggest, but tonight we didn't necessarily see you tap into that as much as you had Because done. I fucking couldn't! Okay? When I had my chance to, he tied my arms to my body, he tied my legs together, and there's nothing I could do. For the past two years, Mr. Interviewer, since I have been here, I have fought my ass off. And I have worked so hard to go 140 plus days with that international title. And I just got it ripped away from me for no reason. Leon, I know you're watching this because I just watched you walk out of here. And Leon, I want you to hear me loud and clear. You think you can move through me. And you think that you can take my title and continue to take what's precious to me. You want to take Eric? Try to take Eric. I dare you! I dare you to try and step to Eric Mason. Step to my best friend, and it will be the last thing you ever do. I promise you, Leon. Wow. Now open up your questions. Is there anybody here that has a question for Mr. Hunter Halkin here tonight? Mr. Camo in the corner. With your frustration, that you have going on so hot, I have to know. What's your favorite ice cream color? <laughs> well, we're lucky that ice cream isn't colors or else I'd be real fucked right now. I don't know how much ice cream I'll be eating tonight because it'll probably melt through my fucking hands if I tried to touch it. But I'd have to veto Jack Delta on this one. I'm a big cookies and cream guy. Big cookies and cream guy. Well. Is there anybody who has a question? Mr. Man in Black. Uh, with your defeat tonight, 
Is it? Are you going to try to continue the game even though you've ran out of lives, or is it time to start a new game? That's so funny. You're just like Leon. You are focused on what I say, not what I mean, and not what I do. You think this is a game? This is a fucking game! This is my life. This is my life. And I'll be damned if I let Leon Lux be the one who ruins it for me. I'm gonna... You think this is a game? This is a new life. This is a new save. I'm starting over. That's your answer. And before I have the galaxy ask you any more questions, I, I must ask, we see you cradling the ribs. Do you believe that that rib injury tonight, not only was it a target for Leon Mux, we saw him target it throughout the match, do you think it was a hindrance to you in your ability to tap into that other level? Are you asking me if I'm going to make an excuse for why I lost? Is that what you're telling me? No. Are you asking me if I'm a coward? No. Are you asking me if I laid down in that ring? Because mm -hmm. I promise you I didn't. And to anybody out there who thinks that this is different, I have a fractured rib from Leon Lux. His leap of faith that he pinned me for, he pinned me because I didn't have a breath in my body. He broke my rib. And I'm pretty sure he's done more damage tonight. As you can tell, I have my old title stamped across my forehead. And I have to live with this until I get another chance. Are there any other questions from the galaxy here tonight for Mr. Hunter Halkin? Mr. Camo? I'm, I'm sorry with the whole ice cream color thing. You know, I'm not very smart. You know, um, but my, my actual question is, would, would you want a rematch? With Leon Lux to try re to regain your title and per se maybe like a dog collar or a uh, uh, first blood match. I don't want a rematch with Leon. I need a rematch with Leon. If it's not the next show. If it's not two months from now, if it's not six months from now, if it's not even for that damn title, I need this back. Leon, you've awakened something in me that shouldn't have been awoken. Brogan opened it at Summer Mania, and you unleashed it! You want this, Leon? God damn it, you got it! Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was Hunter Halkin, former international champion. But from losing a championship to winning one, we're going to switch gears now to the brand new XCW champion, the scholar of XCW, ladies and gentlemen, Alex Cardona Thompson, A.C.D. Now, uh, Mr. ACT obviously getting to soak in the praise here tonight from the crowd. How does it feel to finally accomplish what you've been after all year long? This is a year-long journey for you, not only through everything before Summer Mania, but through all the EBW happenings after that. How does it feel to have finally captured the XCW Championship? Uh, it feels great. I mean, you mentioned it throughout times, EBW screwing me over time after time, and just when it looked like they were doing it again, I was finally able to pull through and capture this XCW championship, and it is an honor to finally capture it. Um, I mean, I've went from New Age champion in my first year now to the XCW champion in the span of three years. So Now, before I open it up to the Galaxy, I do have one more question. You... Mentioned the EBW attacks and how those EBW attacks have been what have held you back from capturing the XCW championship away from Breakaway Brady Branson. And tonight, your would be attackers were fended off by the Rambler Brogan O'Shea. Do you think that without Brogan O'Shea's assistance here tonight, 
you would have been able to capture the XCW Championship. Yes. I think um, I finally got into Brady's head by announcing the Steel Cage match, and he finally realized that I had a way to keep EBW out, and even when Brogan came out and fended them off, you saw Brady Branson continuing his attack with multiple headshots, and yet, in the end, the result was still me walking out champion. So, as much as I appreciate Brogan O'Shea helping me win and coming out there to fend the EBW goons off, I could have easily done it without him if I needed to. Well, I'm going to open it up to the galaxy now, Mr. Man in the Corner. Uh, we heard uh, JJ and Blackheart on commentary mention this was the first steel cage match in eight years, first one in an actual XCW ring, and this is both you and Brady's first uh, steel cage match. If you could tell the XCW Galaxy just how hitting that steel cage feels. Um, it's definitely, you're in a whole new environment because even something as simple as hitting the ropes is going to have its effects on your body because when you hit the ropes, you're at any point bound to hit the steel cage and just feel it on your flesh. Or we saw Luke Blaze shutting the steel cage door on my head. I mean, just causing pain or just knowing that there's a weapon at your disposal or at your opponent's disposal at all times. I mean, they can use the steel cage to cut you open, throw you into. So just having to adapt to the environment and realize that no matter what happens, there is a <laughs> weapon always there to be took advantage of. Is there anybody else who has a question, Mr. Christmas Colors? Yeah, so you have a target on your back, not only with EBW, but also tonight, uh, a Money in the Bank uh, winner was uh, crowned. Um, what's your strategy going forward with that? Um, I just have to have eyes in the back of my head. I mean, you mentioned EBW, and I'm sure that Hayden Vex, Chris Jones, Miata Diaz, James Rewell, they're all going to be right there challenging for the championship. Money in the Bank holder, Jackson Law, I've beat him before in a match that he thought he'd have the advantage in. So, you know, right now my focus is on taking on all challengers. I want to be a fighting champion. So um, whether that be EBW, Money in the Bank holder, international champion, just anyone who wants to step up and showing the XCW Galaxy that we now have a fighting champion. Before I open up the Galaxy to other questions, I have another question myself with Brogan O'Shea taking the EBW Championship away from EBW and you now taking the XCW Championship away from EBW, is it quite possible that we are now seeing the crumbling of Elite Backyard Wrestling here in XCW once again? Uh, I think it's very possible. I mean, Brogan O'Shea took away the championship that they brought into their own company that Chris Jones literally handed me on ODS. He didn't have to earn it. He didn't have to work for it. And now we see Brogan O'Shea actually winning it and me taking the XCW championship against Brady Branson, a championship that was handed to him. I mean, he stole the money in the bank briefcase. Who's to say if that never happens? Who's to say Onyx isn't the one sitting up here? Or who's to say EBW ever happens? But um, I do think there is a change of guard. And I feel like XCW is slowly picking up steam. I mean, EBW still does have the hardcore champion with James Cerebro. But over time, I feel like XCW is going to take over. Well, I'm going to open it back up to the Galaxy here for questions. Mr. Blue Shirt. Oh, this was a pretty big win in your XCW career. Uh, what are your intentions on your celebration tonight? Um, well, uh, that's, that's a great question. You know, I'd love to get out and maybe celebrate with some friends who knows i mean we saw brady branson cut me open i was trapped inside a steel cage i'd love to be trapped between some lakes tonight so you know i'd uh, love to get out and celebrate is there any other questions uh mr man in black speaking of you winning your belt and the perks of having that belt will that belt be joining you in the bedroom with your fiance tonight uh that's a very great question i mean it has before we've seen the new age championship make some appearances and of course when I wrestled Blackheart made a few appearances so uh we'll have to see you know maybe I recreate the uh infamous Shawn Michaels photo shoot when he won the title so I thought it was tasteful <laughs> Mr. Gamer shirt uh yeah with the ATT what's your favorite ice cream flavor oh <laughs> uh, I think I answered this at the Summer Mania post show but it's still cookie dough I think whenever I go to like a Dairy Queen or 
Steak and Shake, Cookie Dough Blizzard, Cookie Dough Shake, that's always the way I go. Mr. Man in the Back. It took you three years to finally capture your first XCW Championship and you know, you've pretty much done it all up to this point. So, um, you know, it, it begs the question of, did, do you think that it took too long to get to this journey or was this journey perfect? And thoughts of being in a cage match and what that does you know, and catapulting your career. Yeah, so I think the uh, journey was definitely perfect. I mean, when I first started, I wasn't the greatest in ring. My promo ability is really what saved me. And I mean, over the three years, I've shown progress from that point now. So I think the journey was perfect. It was not too late at all. I mean, everyone has their own jersey. Hayden Vex in his first year in the company completely dominated. Meanwhile, me, I had to work my way up. And uh, being in the steel cage match, like was mentioned earlier, first one in a ring in XCW, first one in over eight years. So that's just an honor being given the opportunity to participate in the steel cage. And I feel like it was a perfect way to capture the XCW championship, fending off EBW, beating Brady Branson. I feel like the entire story was perfect and I wouldn't have done anything different. Any other questions from the galaxy? Mr. Man in Black. Uh, do you find that your biggest threats are still EBW, or do you think the biggest threat is from the company you're representing from within with, like, the, the other person said, that Jackson Law holding the money in the bank briefcase? Um, I think it has to be Jackson Law because he holds the briefcase, meaning he could have a title shot at any moment. I mean, I could be studying for a test, and Jackson Law could show up attack me and next thing you know I'm defending the XCW championship when I thought I was studying for a history test. So I mean as much as I am focused on EBW and I want to make sure it is completely shut down I have to have eyes in the back of my head because Law does have that briefcase meaning that at any moment any given time he could cash in when I might be unprepared and meanwhile he's been planning to cash in for weeks. Are there any other questions from folks here in the galaxy tonight? Well, Mr. ACT, um, before you get out of here, are there any closing words for you tonight? Uh, you know, it's just an honor to be XCW champion, and I am happy to give the XCW Galaxy a fighting champion, and whoever steps up next, whether it be someone from XCW, EBW, Money in the Bank holder, just know that I'm willing to put this championship on the line. And ladies and gentlemen, going to be closing us out here tonight is a man who faced JJ Kelty tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Fletch. Not like I need to hang out with ACT more so you don't need to play. Normally, I would ask you a question first, but I feel like changing it up a bit. I'm going to open it up to the Galaxy first here tonight. Well, I'm just saying, if he's got a successful one night and he can do it, I have a lot of these successful nights. What? <laughs> Go ahead. Is there anybody here in the Galaxy, Mr. Man in the Corner? I've got to ask, obviously, starting us off. Uh, how do you think Halloween Harvest went? Um, I think it uh, went off without a hitch. Um, of course, it's a roller coaster, like you know most XCW shows. There's there's good and there's bad, um, and you know having bad is is also a good thing because it, it it makes you better. It makes you find a way to to progress and to make things better going forward. And um, no different tonight. We we see what our issues are and we you know find a way to make better on those and. Uh, um, you know, being able to bring in newer talent or, or bring in, you know, some outside talent is great. You know, having Aaron Blaze on the roster is um, a total blessing. He, he's a great talent. He's really coming in. He's really stepping up. And um, it's it's great to have Aaron Blaze uh, aboard. And then, you know, having Jacob Collins, having Destructor Jack Delta, I have a history with those guys um, outside of XCW. Great guys, great talent, I'm, and I'm happy to have them um, on today's pre-show. Um, and then that Jacoby kid, he's he's pretty good. So, um, so yeah, um, I mean, it's great. It, it, everything um, is progressing well. The, the views are up. Um, couldn't ask for, for a better show. I think this season has definitely rocked it.
And you're speaking of this season, and you mentioned outside talent. Is there anybody from outside the XCW roster and outside your normal bubble of stuff that you've seen that you may have your eye on to pull into XCW and this string of people coming in from outside? Yeah, um, we have a lot of that coming up. So just so everybody knows, December 9th starts our tapings for Encounters. Um, debut episode comes up December 14th here on XC Wrestling 1. Um, and that's going to showcase a lot of different talent from outside of XCW as well as XCW talent. It's a, the perfect way to, um, to finally mix talent from other companies, from other promotions, and our talent as well. And uh, we have some tricks and some tr surprises and some good stuff coming up on Encounter. So, yeah, it's going to open up possibilities to um, a lot of outside talent to be able to come in and work. And uh, who knows? You may see guys like... Jacob Collins and, and Jack Delta at Encounters. It, only time will tell. Um, and and so Encounters is a really big project that we're taking on this year. And um, I'm looking for it to be really successful. It's going to be 12 episodes. It's going to be over um, a 12-week span. So um, I'm really excited to present that and to give opportunity for guys to work other people that they haven't had the opportunity to work with, whether it's you know, outside guys coming in to work at XCW or vice versa. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. Are there any questions from the Galaxy here tonight? Mr. Kim. I've only heard this question in like every other time, so, but I gotta know. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Um, so I really like cookies and cream. That's probably my favorite. Um, Moose Tracks is one. Um, Moose Tracks is pretty awesome shit. Um, but I really like drumsticks, Snickers ice cream, Twix ice cream. I, I, I'm an ice cream guy, so I, I really enjoy ice cream. Come on, give me some hard hits. Come on, let's go. There we go. All right. Mr. Blue Shirt. No, not cookies. Just you, you say you like ice cream. Do you like ice cream more than you like legs you were talking about earlier? <laughs> I follow. Well, I get the ice cream and I don't get the legs, so ice cream. Mr. Man in Black. Speaking of the legs you were getting earlier, there's a rumor that's been floating around that you almost drowned once in a pair of legs. I did. <laughs> I, that, that is true. Anything else on Halloween Harvest, though? I had to pinch her leg, though. <laughs> so if you defeating JJ Kelty earlier tonight, what is your next step with your XCW career? Do you plan on tackling this... EBW endeavor, or are you just solely focusing on whatever comes your way? Um, most of the time, I would say it's whatever comes my way, but obviously, EBW is a target, something that I would like to maybe dismiss from XCW in current day. Um, so, I mean, EBW is, of course, in the corner of my eye. Um, you know, there there are other endeavors that I would I would like to go, you know, attempt here in XCW. Um, I mean, at this point, my career 20 years in and XCW pretty much beat them and done it all. So, um, I guess the only thing left is to find those legs to get in between. So, um, but in all seriousness, yeah, like EBW is definitely a thorn in my side and something that, uh, may have to be dealt with here in the, in the near future. And well, according to Hunter Halkin, that Leon Lux guy's a dick. Maybe I should do that. Stemming back to Halloween Harvest, this was the second biggest show of the year, and we saw things that haven't been seen in years in XCW. Not only did we have the cage, but we actually had sponsors Yes. this show. What does it mean for you as someone who's not only been here since the beginning, but you've ran things, you've, you've done everything there is to do in this company, how does it feel to have these things not only back on the show, but things like sponsors and people helping out the show, stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just um, things that make XCW continue to grow. It's what makes us branch out more. It's what gives us the opportunity to bring in outside talent to, to, to give a bigger presentation than everyone else. I mean, I would hate to lie to anyone and say that, hey, I'm not trying to be the, the best company on YouTube. That's that's the goal. Um, it should be everybody's goal. I mean, no offense, but I don't want a guy strutting out on my show calling himself the Nature Boy. Not happening. 
they can take their way there and, and and they can they can try to get their views their way i'm going to try to get their views my views my way and how i'm going to do that is to continue to um work with saint paul gymnasium continue to work with um we had mcdonald's sponsor um the kurt Aston memorial battle royal we had uh kindles tavern tonight we had wcwo big shout out to them special thanks to them for helping us out um with the cage and stuff so like uh, continue to build relationships, whether that's, you know, bringing in different talent, bringing in sponsors, doing all those things. Um, and then, uh, of course, trying to grow um, our business, try to grow what we're doing. Um, some people have their way. We have our way. I, of course, I'm biased and I think our way is the best way. So um, we're just going to keep pushing along, continue to grow. And if we get opportunities to work with, with Kendall's Tavern or, or, or McDonald's or whoever that may be again, then we will for sure jump on the opportunity um, and, and get as much eyeballs on XCW as possible. Is there anything else that hasn't been around the XCW production in Galaxy and on camera in years that you would like to see make its way back to the show here in the coming months and time? Um, I mean, I think we're, we've been pulling the trigger on a lot of things from our past that, um, you know, it, it, it's not special if you're doing a cage match every other month. Uh, you, you need the, the special attraction. You need the five, seven, ten year breaks in between to, to, to bring it in and make it new again. And that's what we did. We haven't had a cage match since Halloween Harvest in, in 2015 between Chris Jones and um, Kevin Harris for the Exhibit Championship. And, and they or the house down but it's a new era now and um it's it's great to to be able to bring that back to the xcw galaxy i feel like um you know we're still pulling the trigger on things surprising people um Miano diaz uh is just the the proof in the pudding of like just when you think that you know what's going on uh things flip um, and they can flip very quickly. So um, there's, there's nothing specific that I'm, I'm looking to bring back to XW. I'm just looking to continue to push and grow the product as much as possible. Mr. Man in Black. Uh, we're going to de-escalate your focus to just you. Another year has gone by, another Halloween harvest, another summer mania. How are you holding up for wrestling all these your, your injuries start to pile up the the age your body started to fail how do you feel after the end of this year personally i actually think i feel better this season than i did last season um i don't know what changed i know that i mean i've obviously been doing a lot of chiropractic therapy and stuff like that early in the year and um i dropped almost 60 pounds um since january of this year so um, a lot of those things obviously play factors in how my body feels. Um, I'm not going to lie, I still sit up, get up from my couch and I can't move for five minutes because my hip is messed up, my hands are messed up, I don't have the strength that I had in my right arm, I got muscle issues, I got carpal tunnel, so I, I have a lot of things going on with my body, but I'll say that I do feel better this season than I even did last season. So. Um, not a lot of slowing down right now. Mr. Camo. So I heard you mention that, you know, you was talking earlier about how Hunter Hawk and, and, and calling Leon Lux a dick. Uh, Leon Lux has been in, in and out of your company uh, known as like uh, Billy Supernova and uh, uh, at a time as the Lucifer. Uh, but I was going through a, a, the history but they never seen a match between Josh Fletcher or Leon Lux. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, uh, would you ever want to have a match with Leon or try to bring him back down a notch from what he did to Hunter tonight? If the the opportunity arises, sure. I would. Uh, I would love the opportunity to mix it up with Leon Lux. I think. Uh, We'd be able to tell a hell of a story out there. I think um, that may be when I would quit because he probably beat the shit out of me. So I probably wouldn't feel good after that one like I do now. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, of course, if the opportunity comes up, there, there's a lot of guys that um, I still haven't had the opportunity to work with. I haven't had the opportunity to work with Eric Mason. I haven't had the opportunity to work with um, um, Rob Slater, really, outside of XCW, maybe. But in XCW, I mean, I had the, the handicap with them and, and Seminole Warrior, but never one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Jacob Collins came in tonight. I've, I've never worked him. Jack Delta, um, never had a one-on-one -on -one with him. Uh, th there's endless possibilities still for me. Um, JJ Kelty, this was our first match together as well. I've never wrestled Jay Ellis. Um, there's a lot of people on the XCW roster that I have uh, I have yet to, to tap into, and uh, I think the opportunities are still there for me. Mr. Man in the Corner. We got the VCAs coming up. This is technically the last show that's One eligible. One of my least favorite fucking I shows know. of the year. It's so hard. I know. You can play as a booker. Year, as a it. booker, it's hard. We hear it. Now, a lot of the times, the awards on these shows, some of them can be just shooing. Some of them can be really tough to call. How do you think, with as good as this season has been, how tough do you think it's going to be to call for the VCAs this year? I think there's there's a there's a top three in Superstar of the Year that people are really going to have to really come to terms on who they want that person to be. Um, I feel like match of the year every year is tough when you've got 10 to 12 matches that are on the docket and it's literally the best of the year. When you've got matches like Corey Lee, ACT, and Brady Branson for Summer Mania and then you have that cage match that we've seen tonight and even even the the smaller forgotten matches that, that come up through the year. Um, you know, some of these matches between Corey Lee and Jay Ellis early in the season. Um, you know, Eric Mason and Jane Tucker and I mean, even that was above what we thought was going to be. So there are so many matches to go through. I think match of the year is going to be the hardest one. Superstar of the year, I think it's close between a few. Um, but man, has there been some crazy shocking moments this year. So viewer's choice is going to be neck and neck, I think, all year. That's what I'd like to say. Any other questions from the Galaxy? Well... Before you get out of here, Mr. Fletch, is there any final words for the XCW Galaxy before we close out the Halloween Harvest Post Show Conference? Sure. Um, so the biggest thing is thank you to WCWO, Joey Owens. Thank you for you know helping us out, uh, getting the cage here, uh, sending a crew to help set up, um, really helping XCW continue to grow and, and do the things that we're doing. Uh, a, a special thanks to Reverend Tom Bryce of Sportswire Radio who continues to support and, and welcome guests onto his show and really push XCW as the gold standard, as the symbol of excellence as I like to call it. Um, I, I, a big thank you to him as he continues to, to really push the product and get it out there. Kendall's Tavern, once again, thanks for um, catering some of the food for, for the, the event today. Um, and, and sponsoring us. Um, kudos to Justin Parsley for helping us, um, you know, set up that, even though him and I have had our issues, of course. Um, a big thank you to him. Um, and um, the X7 Galaxy, of course. Thank, thank you guys. Um, we just recently started posting the, the Facebook or the, the YouTube shorts, um, skyrocketing. Um, our, our numbers have been fantastic. Our, our show numbers are up. Um, everything is on an upward trend. Um, and then um, an early thank you to those who are traveling out here for encounters. Um, it's such a big project. I, I can't talk about how much, um, you know, how special encounters is and how much it means to everybody um, and how big of an event this is actually going to be. So um, an early thank you to the eight, nine plus grueling hours of taping that we're about to have for encounters. And uh, all in all, just um, a big, you know, a big thank you to all the people who help support. And of course, you know, a big thanks to um, everybody watching JWF as well, boosting the XW All Access channel. Um, and, and a huge thanks to Jacob Collins and Instructor Jack Delta for, even at a short notice, being able to come out today, perform, put on the match that they did. 
Um, forever thankful when I be able to bring in talent like that, and and they killed it. So, well, Mr. Fletch, if that's all and there's no other questions from the galaxy, we'd like to thank you for closing out the Halloween Harvest Post Show Conference and thank you for everything you've done tonight. And well, ladies and gentlemen, that has been your XCW Halloween Harvest 2023 post show conference. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time. I am not a